Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here this morning. We have a great show lined up. We'll get started with our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center. Now listen, I know we always talk about taking a GED test for those of you who want to finish your high school diploma. A lot of people want to, you know, I hear them say, we're going, I'm going to take my GED pretty soon and then procrastinate, put it off, put it off. Well, let me tell you, now, I just got word from out there that the state is going to put out a new GED test in January of 2014. And I promise you it's going to be a lot harder than the one you can take now. So don't procrastinate any longer if you plan on taking that GED. Go ahead and make that uh, a goal of yours pretty soon is to take that GED, get out of the way, and don't wait till January of 2014. High today is going to be 67, low tonight 47. Water temperature remains at 71 degrees. The river readings, Appalachia Apple Gold Down stays at a 0.3, and the Choctahatchee at Caraville is a 1.6. Just slightly went up a little bit, uh, and it's going to... Uh, it's going to continue to go up uh, just a hair, but we just haven't had much rain. Uh, we, we, it's dry all over. Uh, Bill Allen and I were talking, talking about the big river, the Apalachico River. We may never see it back at that five or six foot on a regular basis like we have, and it, it's just amazing that uh, it stayed this low for this long. But a little bit of rain, we all need some rain. Our animals need some rain, my yard needs some rain, our food plots need some rain, and we just all need some rain right now. But a lot of times fall, we have this little dry spell that goes through every fall. Let's take a look at our tidal chart. Looking at uh, today's, uh, we got a low tide this morning at 523, almost as we speak. We're right at low tide, and the high tide's coming in all day. It's going to be high at 754 tonight. That's on Tuesday, November 13th, right there. Good, strong tides coming up for the weekend. All right, let's take our first break, and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back, folks, and welcome to my good friend, Bill Allen. Hey, Chuck. How you doing? <laughs> hey, listen, we, Bill and I fish a lot together and all, but lately I've been so busy I haven't been able to go with him, but it didn't slow him down. He went without me. <laughs> well, so and you I, just have to make the sacrifice. He's so good about calling and asking me to go with him, and, and it has been something about every time. And, but anyway, you, it has. you've been doing good. So uh, we've got some pictures we're going to show you a little bit later, but Bill is regularly on the water. I, I was, was sitting here talking right before we came on the air. Uh, you, you, you flounder fish. You gig flounder, you, you trout fish, and you redfish. Pretty that. much. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. So what else what has been going on? I'm going to chase redfish first, but when it's flounder season and when it's a little bit cool, you know, yeah. I love to trout fish. But uh, the mayor and I, Greg and I, have been over to Tyndall a couple of times, uh, to Crooked Island Sound, I mean, a couple of times, and uh, have done real well. You know, yeah. trout are really active right now. I was... Uh, with Mark Cowart the other day and talked to Mark. He and his son were out uh, in West Bay and they caught a bunch of trout. They were uh, uh, all, you know, pretty decent sized trout. It yeah. was pretty good. Mark and I, a week or so back, caught some really good trout over there. But uh, they're getting active, right? You know, the water's cooling down. And, mm -hmm. and uh, now my brother-in-law Cliff was here and we went, uh, made an early trip down to, uh, down to Appalachia to see if there was anything going on. and. Uh, all the regular spots and where we did the show mm -hmm. last year, we just uh, didn't really do anything. That water's yeah. not cold enough. But when we ran all the way down and got within maybe 300 yards of the mouth, uh, we caught 21 trout in about an hour. Now, they all stopped growing at 14 and 7 eighths, but we had a couple over that. It was a lot of fun. I think it's just a little bit early up there now. You know, it's funny to say that I, had, I talked to Barry Miller over the weekend, and he and his son-in-law went down and almost had an identical thing that happened. He said all the, every one of those fish were like a right 14 and a half inch. I mean, they yeah. were just like a whole family of them. Everywhere they went, they were just like that. Well, I, th I think that it's just not, uh, you know, we had that little cold weather tease there for a while yeah. when it was down in yeah. the 40s, but it just wasn't extended enough to, uh, yeah. you know, to run them up in there. Those big trout will get up in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what all... Uh, Bill's real good about bringing, you know, the different lures and all he uses. Tell us what all you've been catching them on. Well, um, the last time I was on, uh, and I couldn't remember the name of them, which <laughs> is kind of embarrassing, so I wanted to bring it this time. All but right. uh, it's these Berkeley Havoc. Okay. It's been the new thing. It, uh, it's, a, it's designed by Mike Iconelli, and we got one sitting out here. Mm -hmm. uh, 
the the tail on this thing is a real unique design. It it's not a uniform in size. It's real heavy on the end here, and uh, the thing I like about it is you can swim this bait, or you can you know I like the bounce yeah. along the bottom uh, especially, but. It's very versatile, and uh, Greg had these first. This is a watermelon pearl, that uh, another color, and then they make one that's kind of like a new penny. But um, first time Greg used them, I and he caught a really nice redfish on it. But but it's it's versatile. That tail has a lot of action to it, mm -hmm. and so you know you can bounce it a while, or if you're mm -hmm. throwing it in deeper water and you want to swim it, and then just let it die and, and bounce it. And we're rigging them with those uh, those edge hooks so yeah. it, it's virtually weedless but uh, I wanted to make sure I brought these back and I mean these are I don't I don't think that they're scented but I keep them in with the same place I keep my gulp and every, all my soft plastics I keep you yeah. know and I pour the gulp on them so it doesn't really matter but uh, they're an eight count for like 354 bucks okay. they're a lot cheaper than, than than gulp or anything like that but they have been real effective uh, any time, any time of day or a moving tide or what, what a, I'm always, it, you know, obviously I'd like for the tide to be falling any time. I think yeah. fish are more predictable as long as it's, as long as it's moving, yeah. you know. And especially if you're starting on a falling tide, you're, you know, right after a high tide, it's, uh, it's a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. And it just makes a good versatile bait without switching rods to get something to bounce mm -hmm. or something to swim. So you kind of, it, it's, it's a good way to find fish. Uh -huh. Now, have you had a chance to uh, to see any tailing? Have you had a chance to throw any tailing redfish lately? Yeah. Now, uh, when uh, when Cliff was here week before last, I guess, or weekend before last, uh -huh. when that fog was so bad, mm -hmm. let me tell you something, folks. Don't leave the house without a GPS, because when you get in the fog, yeah, yeah, you can't tell where you are. Yeah. And you remember five or six years ago, my story. I drove around that bay before I had the GPS, and I. I didn't have any idea where I was. I thought I was good, but that ain't the case. I've done that one time, too. It's amazing. You know, you've been around the area your whole life, and you get out there, and all of a sudden you turn a little bit, and then you get turned around, and you, and it's amazing. You uh, think that you can hold a straight course if you're not looking at a compass or yeah. something like that, but I, that's a, that's a well-known story. Yeah. I spent, Of course, it didn't, the fog didn't lift that morning until about 9.30, so yeah. I just rode around trying not to get hit by a barge out there. But. Yeah, and you always think about that. Big old, <laughs> the biggest boat is going to come through the bay uh, full speed. Uh, but anyway, we well, went. It's, it's the time of year that it happens. Oh, it me? is. It, yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, but we went, and, uh, and uh, fortunately, you know, with the GPS, we went to East Bay over there. Mm -hmm. and, and Winston, it was... It was as slick as this table. There wasn't a breath of wind blowing. And you could see the hill from maybe 30, 40 yards, but we caught seven nice redfish. I think I sent you a yeah. picture of some of the, but they were, I mean, the water wasn't moving at all. You mm -hmm. could see them, tails sticking up everywhere. You could see them. The first one I caught, we were just got started and was still out in about two and a half feet of water, and I'd made a fairly long cast about halfway to the boat. Mm -hmm. You could see him coming. Looked like somebody had shot a torpedo at that top water bait. Uh -huh. And I told Cliff, I said, "There he is." And about two or three seconds later, he just blew up on it. But <laughs> we, you know, we, yeah. it was, you know, it was foggy and it was slick. So if you mm -hmm. fished uh, a skitter walk again, yep. real slow, they were just tearing it up. We yeah. had a great morning. Uh, Great. All right, sounds good. We got those pictures. We're going to take a break, come back and show you some good pictures. Be right back. All right, welcome back. Sitting here with Bill Adam talking about fishing and all, and uh, uh, it's, been a, it's been a pretty good fall so far. It has been. It, it has been a good fall. Yeah. You know, we had such a rough summer with it raining. All right, we're going to start off with the pictures here. Let's, let's check this out right here. We're talking, you went to Flounder gig the other night. Uh, let's see. We're going to. I got a good compliment the other day that I was handling this iPad real good. I know, they, just did, they just didn't know what was going on between the commercial breaks and between the show. All right, what is this one right here? Yeah, uh, the, uh, I think that was Friday night. Uh, my youngest son, Dalton, and I, he called, wanted to go, and it was, boy, it was a beautiful night. We didn't have hardly any wind whatsoever. And uh, <clears throat> we ran out into uh, St. Andrews Bay and, Actually got those in about an hour and a half. It was a pretty stress-free night. Uh, there again, you got invited to go, but you had obligations. I think it was a football game. What was it? Yeah, it was Coach Brown's last, uh, that's right. It was Coach Brown's last 
uh, ball game, I had, I had to go to Italy with Mosley, and, and I would have gone if it hadn't been for that. If it had been a regular ball game, I would have gone. Because I remember calling you about halftime, and, and you'd got, in the first 20 minutes, you'd already give four or five. Yeah, we, we, uh, we polled yeah. for about 10 minutes, and then uh, it started, and, and we got five in the next 20 minutes, and then we got another five or four, I guess, in the, in the next hour probably. Yeah, and I saw Austin on Saturday night at that wedding reception. He said he was mad because y'all didn't ask him to go. Well, I we said, did, well, yeah, but I know. he had that wedding obligation. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> but, you know, last Saturday when, when uh, the three of us went, actually that's when mm -hmm. Cliff was here too. Uh, that's when we got those two big ones that I sent you a picture of. I know. Cliff. Uh, we got six that night, but one was almost six pounds and one was a little over five. They were nice, okay. real nice. Speaking of redfish, and I'll talk about some big redfish. Check this out. This is this is uh, Brandon uh, Boyd Jones. This is her daughter. This is Derek Derby. Okay, wow. and, and uh, she. This is Derek Derby holding the fish. This is Cameron Jones, a little girl there. She caught this redfish, folks. And and she. Uh, I talked to her mom the other night. Look at. Is that is that nice or what? She's uh, big look at she that. Is. that. That fish almost as big as her right there. Good job there, Cameron. I had a ball doing it, too. Good job, Derek, for uh, putting them on the redfish, too. Nice, nice job there. So uh, y'all seeing in the, in the pictures and all, that is always something to fall back on, uh, catching uh, redfish if, uh, you know, on an outgoing tide at, at jetties and all. It's always a lot of fun. It uh, is. A lot of people uh, do it. Those, those fish are big, mm -hmm. and uh, most of them are, are too big. So, you know, just... Take your time and, and revive those fish and get them back in the water. You know, if you yeah. just, you, the thing about a redfish, he'll give you everything he's got. So yeah. when he's at the boat, he's exhausted. And, mm -hmm. and if you just chunk him back in, he's not going to make it. Mm -hmm. And those are spawning fish. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm yeah. big on letting them go anyway. But, you know, just take your time and revive them and, mm -hmm. and let, them, let them catch their breath before you stick them back in the water. I promised to uh, Mitch Coleman, I didn't get this fishing port the other day, speaking of fishing reviving. Mitch Coleman is really good. Mitch is a captain down in Mexico Beach, has his own charter service, and he sent me this uh, report in, uh, actually it's Sunday night, but the water temperature down there at Mexico Beach is cool to 69, but the water is really clear Mexico Beach. You know, you and I like to fish down there. Oh, yeah. We'll get a chance. But now he's got to, talking about catch and release, what you're talking about. If you just want to catch and release, here's what he suggested, big fish. He just spent a few minutes catching uh Catching some live grunts about six to eight inches long, for, you know, grunt is a good bait. And it's just basically, I think, because of that noise. That noise is aggravating. I, I really do. Uh, and then, you know, uh, use some lady fish for cut bait, and you use 70, uh, let's see, goes on in structure. Now, he wants to fish over structure about seven to eight feet deep, and you're going to catch some a really big gag group and some big red snappers this time of year. And remember, they're not legal to keep, but if you want somebody coming in from out of state or something, never caught a snapper, never caught a grouper, that's an excellent time to do that. He also talks about a, a set of drift in there and with just enough sinker to get, you know, get the bait down at 20, 25 feet. And, and now if you want to fish for dinner, which uh, a lot of us like to fish for dinner, so the best thing is to take some frozen squid and use a dropper rig around this public, all those public numbers out there out of Mexico Beach. There are a lot of places down there to fish. Uh, fish the car bodies, uh, good numbers are lane snappers and sea bass. Lane snappers and sea bass. That's two good eating fish. And you catch oh, absolutely. Them. And you catch a lot of them. Yeah, you do catch a lot yep. of them. You that's catch a, a lot of them. Mitch, I appreciate you sending that report, buddy. And uh, that's, you know, that's two, two different things to do. Uh, I'll tell you, that Mexico Beach Artificial Reef Association has done an outstanding job have. over there, haven't they? They, they have. There's so much structure down there. The divers love doing it and the fishermen love doing it. It's just, just a lot of fun doing it. And, you know, fishing off the pier down there. I get good reports fishing off the pier. And it's, we're, we're in a late fall pattern. Uh, we're right, yeah. Thanksgiving right around the corner. And, you know, it's, it's a time where the fish are, like, like we talked about, uh, the trout may or may not be going up in, the, you know, this week. But pretty soon they're going to be going up in the creek. I hope. We, we hope. But they, they are pretty active right now. Yeah. You know, you, you get out two or three feet of water and... Uh, uh, in fact, uh, Mark, they were throwing that Miradine mm -hmm. XL, you know, that sinking mm -hmm. mirror lure. Uh, it's just like top water beneath the surface, and those trout were just wearing it out. They were having, you know, they caught quite a few. Well, that's something big fun, just switch, find, switching lures and find out what they're going to hit today. Exactly. So I got a good call uh, uh, Monday afternoon, Sunday afternoon uh, from, from one of my viewers. Uh, Jared said and he was out, and he had his group out there fishing. For, and they, all of a sudden, around Redfish Point, in about 10 feet of water, they got into the Spanish mackerel. Yeah. 
and they, they said they were just, you know, Spanish all over the place out there, from Redfish Point on over to the structure in the middle of the bay. They said they were just all out in there. Well, I talked to a guy yesterday when, as I was uh, taking the boat out of the water yesterday afternoon. Uh, a fellow had just pulled his boat out, and uh, they had been out there catching Spanish. Well, they, that, that validates the reports I got. In They're, November. Yeah. And, so, uh, and most people wouldn't even be looking for them in no. November, and, uh, and, but if you, you don't know until you go. No, that's yeah, a fact. Yeah. <laughs> that's a fact. Okay, look, we're going to take our final break, come back with our fishing times, and a lot more fish talk. All right, welcome back. Sitting here with Bill Allen of Regular Zone Panhandle Outdoors, which is America's only daily show. You understand why they call it America's only daily show? I do. Because <laughs> it's hard to do every morning. <laughs> well, it is. It is. Uh, let's, uh, let's always first want to take uh, this last segment and always talk about our fishing times. You know, we talk about it a lot of times we're out together. We talk about these fishing times, and, and they're, they're flat out turning on at certain times of the day. They're, they're flat amazingly out, close. Flat out turning on, and, and this is uh, over the years I've, I've become. Uh, I'm very fond of these fishing times. I'm going to fish maybe all day, but I'm going to really pay attention during this hour block. Yeah, you know, I always, well, you know, of course, I'm, when I'm not here, I'm watching the show every morning, but I make a note about it, you know, mm -hmm. especially as I'm fishing that day. And mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing how close they are. Don't know how they do it, but it works for me. It's the moon. All right. Let's take a look at times today. We're looking at uh, this morning now. We're looking at 11. 15 to 1 15 we're looking at really that, that little block right around lunch 11 11 15 12 15 then tonight we're looking at 11 46 to 1 46 11 46 to 1 46 you have the uh we're gonna you know this thursday night now is going to be the uh first baptist church at 11th annual wild game cookout we had Rick and Snell Grove on the show the other day, and they're already cooking they're gonna have a lot of stuff and oh, yeah. you can't go now because you and the boys are going yeah i hate it uh i really enjoy going to those things, especially that when the food is so good. And, yeah. and the other thing is, is you're, you're around a bunch of people who uh, who like to talk fishing and hunting and everything yeah. else. So there's never never any dull moments out of, you know, it's a lot of fun. But yeah, uh, it just coincided this year with uh, our annual squirrel hunting and well, camping really. trip. So mm -hmm. we're headed to Howard's Creek on Thursday and be back Sunday. But I'm really looking forward to it. I've got now I've got one grandson that's going, and probably next year I'll have the other one be old enough to go. So that's that's why we talk about a family tradition, how people have done it for years and years. I know your dad did it. When oh yeah, that, yeah. So. Dad and I went, and uh, you know, then when my boys got to be like five and seven, they went. Mm -hmm. You know, now I've got a grandson going, so I hope yeah. I can keep going for a few well, more that's, years. That's we great. have a blast down there. That's great. I'm glad to see you do it. Is our is our pickle jar over there in the window? Right here. Okay. All right. We're gonna draw out a name. This is gonna be for two tickets, and you can pick them up here. I tell you what. Just call me. Uh, now, uh, I tell you what. Let's do it this way. Instead of instead of drawing names out of pickle jar, because I know everybody may may not be able to go like Bill. He may have a previous commitment. I'm gonna have the first person that calls me after the show, after the show. Now, if you call me then, then I will go ahead and uh, get your name and get your two tickets to you. Okay. We'll do it that way instead of drawing. Because there might be some people out of town and all. Uh, squirrel season. Early, early reports I, I, is not sounding really good. Uh, I don't know if the not enough water for the squirrels. <laughs> well, I, you know, usually in, it, it, the good news is we can camp just about anywhere we want to down there. You know, I mean yeah. everything's dry. But uh, usually when uh, you know when the water's lower, it's it's a pretty good season for squirrels. And I haven't yeah. talked to anybody who went you know yeah. this weekend. But uh, and Bill and. And his boys and his family, they don't go. I think they're actually going to make a couple trips this year, but uh, they don't go till like the second weekend or maybe Thanksgiving weekend. It's just, you know, they get everybody starts yeah. working and has families, and it's hard to find the time to get yeah. together. And that, this weekend was the only time we could all go. So uh, I haven't really talked to anybody who, yeah. who went yet. Yeah, my early reports were, were, you know, I talked to a few people, and they, they you know, of course, it, uh, different parts of the river you can camp on and have different, different oh, populations. Yeah. I know I, I always judge the acorn crop this year. I always judge. I got a big oak tree in my front yard, and, and uh, well, last year I had a bounty crop of acorns. But there, this year, and I keep a close watch on. Also, have some property up there in, Jack, in Calhoun County, and uh, it doesn't seem to be as many acorns right now as I have seen uh, last year or two. So. Yeah, and I don't, I don't you know, know it, it, all that rain we had this summer. I don't know if it knocked them off early or if yeah. that has much of an effect on them. I, that's not something I know a whole lot about. But, yeah. you know, there's so we like to go down, uh, put in Howard's Creek and run down in Beerman's and two or three places yeah. we like to camp down there. And, uh, uh, well, you know, but, uh, you know, there's plenty of squirrels to eat. 
And, and everything's in cycles too. Everything goes in cycles uh, in nature. Uh, it could be acorns. It could be uh, you know uh, redfish, whatever. We just have we have different populations each year and all. And scallops. We talk about it. Yeah. We talk about the, the cycles in, in, in scallops. That, that's amazing. And all. But we did pretty well. This you time. know, we still talk about uh, that last trip we went on. The last uh, it was Gail and I and you and Donna, mm -hmm. and uh, just the two couples out there. One one very many people out there. Uh, it was at the end of the season. And, and those scallops we got were, were that big, folks. Oh, they were just what palm size. What size. Huge? Like, and the meat was just was just uh, huge, big as your thumb or finger. So. And, and how deep of water were we in? <laughs> well, it's, it's embarrassing, I must say. You could barely, I could barely float in it. You know, <laughs> but, but, uh, really, it was this deep of water. Yeah. And I'm, I'm thinking uh, there would be a lot of people out here trying to get these scallops. Well, do you know the the report was so bad this year, mm -hmm. and uh, but. We happened to find them in that one little area, and it's a place you hadn't been, and I hadn't been yeah. in a very long and a, time. We'd done it about 12 or 15 years ago, that area, and yeah. I had done it, and, and uh, we just kept looking until we, till, till we found them. And uh, we're able to do, yeah. you know, we did pretty good. Yeah, we did. Yeah, they were good. They were good. That was the kind you put on a kebab. And, and oh, yeah, they were big enough to do anything you want to with, so that was fun. Yeah. Well, listen, buddy, I know we uh, we all got to get get off and go to work, and I appreciate you getting up. I do a show with Bill every now and then, and because you, you go out so much and do so much. And well, I try to. We live in a great place. But you got to you got to work water. too, don't you? Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You got to work to get out there and do that. But uh, I take every chance I get. That's for sure. I'm gonna try to take some time off, maybe during uh, Thanksgiving or Christmas, and Bill will be sitting right in, and we won't skip a beat when he's here. So I, I well, we'll see. Well, I appreciate you doing it. He gets. Uh, some of your buddies coming in talking to you. Yeah, and, and I get some good feedback from that, you know, mm -hmm. and I hope you do. It's like, you know, getting Justin and Matt in, and yeah. these guys are on the water all the time. Yeah. And Greg, who just, he loves to fish every bit as much as I yeah. do. And, and uh, you know, he, he's a good fisherman. So right. it's just good to hear what people are doing, I think. I know, and a lot of people are doing it. I'm going to take you out to breakfast. Hey, let's go. All right. Hey, folks, thank you all for watching the show. Listen, sometimes they do something good for somebody, and God bless Thanks for joining us for Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.